On this channel, we've covered many horny species, both figuratively and literally. Unfortunately for some of our loyal fans, the species we'll be talking about today fits the second category. Introducing the Iktochi, a species we're sure most fans would recognize on sight, even if they couldn't put a name to them. In today's video, we'll talk about their biology, their history, and most important of all, how they made the most base decisions during and after the Clone Wars. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Much like most of the other near-human species, Iktochi were humanoids with some very interesting adaptations to suit their environments. Standing at around 1.5 meters and weighing in at 80 kilos on average, Iktochi were roughly as tall as a human teen and as heavy as a full-grown adult. The species' most distinguishing feature were their large horns and their bulbous foreheads that were covered in dense, rough skin that could and would be used as a battering ram. On the other side of their head, long, thick tusks or horns curved downwards toward their chins. In males, they tended to be longer than in females, and that, combined with the male's higher tendency toward aggression, led xenobiologists to believe that, once in their distant evolutionary past, these horns were likely upturned and used for combat, much like bulls have today. Their other most prominent feature was their hands, which were one and a half times the size of a human's. Their fingers were like fleshy sausages, which greatly limited their dexterity. Despite this limitation, Iktochi could still wield lightsabers, as proven by Jedi Master and Council Member Seisi Tin during the Clone Wars. As for their skin, unlike other near-human species, like the Twi'leks, who boasted a veritable rainbow of colors, the Iktochi were mainly pinkish, with hues of peach, pink, apricot, and so on. Much like the skin on their foreheads, an Iktochi's epidermis was very tough. Their homeworld, Iktoch, was a rocky planet with powerful cross winds that kicked up sand and gravel at high velocity. So this thick skin was an evolutionary adaptation to prevent the winds from flaying them alive. That was, however, the only way in which the Iktochi had thick skin. In most other ways, they were very sensitive people. Their species was blessed with powerful telepathic abilities, which naturally made them very empathetic. To protect themselves from seeming too emotional, they tended to mask their emotions behind an outward appearance of unfriendliness. But that wasn't the only natural gift their species possessed. The other, and arguably more valuable one, was precognition. This commonly refers to a Jedi's ability to sense something imminent thanks to the Force. In the Iktochi's case, it meant that, when they were on their native world, they were able to have direct knowledge of the future, often through visions. Because of their psychic gifts, Iktochi weren't very welcome in the galaxy at first. Although they could adapt well to living with others and were very respectful, other beings usually found their telepathic and precognitive abilities creepy and bullied them. Others tried to take advantage of them for more nefarious purposes, which is also why Iktochi were banned from every casino in the galaxy ever. Despite this negative side to their abilities, it turns out that it was exactly because of them that they made some really big brain moves during the Galactic Civil War. The Iktochi's history begins on the rocky moon of Iktoch out in the Outer Rim, a rocky moon orbiting the gas giant Iktochon. As we mentioned earlier, Iktoch was plagued by sand and gravel windstorms that would have flayed other beings alive and was thus considered inhospitable by most of the galaxy. The only people who could live there were the Iktoch. Indeed, the only sentient species in their sector. In their early days, they lived in the mountains and were still a primitive but sentient beings when the Kwa discovered them. Now, the Kwa were a reptilian species from Dathomir. Over 100,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Kwa established a great and surprisingly benevolent empire across the Outer Rim. They had mastered the Force and relied on technology they invented called the Infinity Gates to get around. Later, the Kwa would clash with the Gri and the Rakata, the latter of whom eventually wiped them out between 30,000 and 25,000 BBY. 
But when the Kwa were still kicking, they stumbled upon Iktoch and stuck around enough to teach the natives how to use the force. After the Kwa civilization collapsed, the Iktoch went back to doing their thing, alone in their star system until some Republic explorers discovered them around 3500 BBY. To the explorers' surprise, however, the Iktoch had been ready for them, and by ready, we mean ready for years in advance. Like, carve the emblem of the Republic into their planet's surface and prepared a huge party at the scout's predicted landing site, levels of ready. The Republic xenobiologists landed on the high plateau they'd carved the symbol into, expecting to find a forgotten colony. Instead, they found an unknown sentient species with what was clearly the gift of precognition. Naturally, the Republic was interested. The Jedi in particular studied their precognitive abilities, concluding that it wasn't a force power, but could be enhanced with the force. They also proved to be excellent pilots, mechanics, and engineers. After this primary contact, the Iktoch were no longer isolated. Force-sensitive Iktochi became Jedi, and others traveled across the galaxy. For some time, it was difficult for them to integrate with other species, as they were widely known for their creepy gifts, and even creepier first contact. But with time, they became just another Joe on the streets of any Republic world. Unfortunately for them, and for the galaxy at large, this fragile peace didn't last forever. It turns out that the Iktochi's big heads made room for some mega wrinkly brains, as they proved during and after the Clone Wars. Before the Republic fell, Iktochi diplomats had a vision of the forfeiture of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. Determined to prevent this tragedy, they did everything they could to raise the alarm and get the Republic to actually do something about an impending threat. But if you've ever seen any of our videos about the Republic and the Jedi Order, you'll be able to correctly predict that their warnings fell on deaf ears and the Republic did absolutely nothing. When the Iktochi realized they weren't being taken seriously, they made what we believe to be one of the most rational decisions of the Clone Wars and jumped ship, returning to their homeworld en masse and leaving the stupid humans to make their own messes and live with them. While the Republic and CIS fought their petty war, then bit the dust when the Emperor took over, they were back on Iktoch building orbital colonies to make sure all their immigrant brothers and sisters had a safe place to live with proper access to food and water. Palpatine, for one, was perfectly happy for them to nope out of galactic affairs and left them alone. He set up a blockade around their system, but otherwise didn't bother further. He didn't even install a puppet governor on their world. The Iktoch were left to live their lives and continue their species, and Palpatine had Palpatine things to do. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. During the Galactic Civil War, the Iktoch continued to let the galaxy deal with the problem they had accurately predicted and warned them about. However, once the Empire fell, they were actually among the first to come forward and become a founding member of the New Republic. We do know, however, that they completely failed to predict the Yu Vong invasion and were caught as off guard as the rest of the galaxy. Overall, the Iktochi were an interesting species that failed to get the proper recognition they deserved. The same can be said for dozens of other species in Star Wars. With a franchise as big as this one, you can't turn over an asteroid without finding another weirdly delightful and delightfully weird species. Which ones do you want us to talk about next? Feel free to leave your requests in the comment section below because we read every single comment and your guys' opinions matter. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.